Hey, so this is our second topic, looking at polynomials. Uh, I think the whole subject can more or less be distilled into these kind of these points, right? But even within that, all you've really got is equations from the graphs, synthetic division. So there's various ways they can ask you synthetic division, but really all of this is just synthetic division, which is where you've got your table, if you remember this. Very, very good straight lines, obviously. Uh, so, you know, say I wanted to divide x cubed plus 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. If I want to divide that by, let's say, x plus 1, I'd simply put negative 1 up here because I change the sign of this when I put it in here. And then all the coefficients of this I put up here. Okay, so that's your 1, 2, 3, and 1. If it is a factor, your remainder will come out as zero at the end. But that's what we do. So the minute you see a, a cubic term, that's usually what we do. Sometimes it could be a quartic. But if you see a cubic term and we're looking at factorizing, you're thinking I'm going to be using synthetic division. That's like a polynomial type question. So change the sign and then we follow through the process, which we'll do later on in the video. And the other one is just the equation from the graphs. Okay, so any polynomial, again, Beautiful straight lines for me. Something like this. Okay, the roots here are part of your solution. Your graphs. Your graphs in the form y is equal to k. That'd be x take away a, x take away b, x take away c. And all you're doing is looking at the roots and changing their sign. Okay, that's as simple as that. So if that's negative three and that's two and four, you would have plus three, negative two negative four and to get k you would have to substitute in a point which they would give you they would maybe give you this point in here and then you'd substitute the x and y and get the k so that's your your two main skills synthetic division and understanding this general equation for a polynomial there's different ways they can ask it but that's really it so actually you've just got two things that you want to remember so last time i did a whole introduction video this time i won't i'll just get get cracking okay so Let's look at this. I'm sorry if it's a wee bit quality is not that good. I'll read that, okay? So I'm just going to set my synthetic division up. Ta -da! I hope that looked really magical on the screen. So all we're doing when we show that something is a factor, we take our coefficients of our polynomial. So I've got 3, 10, 1, negative 8 and negative 6. If there's a gap, so this is going 3, 2, about 4, 3, 2, 1, no power. You would put a zero. Okay, so if say there was no x cubed term in there, I'd have to put a zero up here. Okay, so just remember that. So I'm gonna show that this is a factor. So if it's if it's a factor, I should find that my remainder in here is zero. So it's actually quite nice. It means if you make a little mistake, you'll be like, oh, go back and find it. So first thing we do is we just pull down this three. So this three stays the same. And then we're multiplying across and we're adding up and down. So you're always multiplying across and you're adding up and down. So negative 3 times by the 3, that's going to give me negative 9. I'll add them together for 1. Then we multiply the negative 3 and the 1. That'll give me negative 3. Add them for negative 2. Multiply. We're always going back. Negative 3, negative 2, 6. Add them together for negative 2. Multiply them together. Get me 6. And that looks good to me. They add together. To give me zero. But you have to write that the remainder is equal to zero, and therefore x plus three is a factor. Okay, so get your statements, get your English, get your strategy onto your page. Okay, let the marker know what you're thinking. Because to do this shows, yeah, you can do synthetic division, but are you really understanding the question? Okay, so I know my remainder is zero, which means that x plus three is a factor. Fantastic. And now it says Hence or otherwise factorize that fully. So we're just going to take that a little bit further. So now I'm going to look at the what's left. So when I've divided my original term, okay, that term there, this is what I'm left with. Let's write that out. Okay, so part B. That is the same as three x cubed because I'm taking a power away. One x squared. 2x 
negative two. So I've got that. And I've also got my plus three. How could I possibly factorize this any further? Well, you would just do another synthetic division. If I went through another synthetic division with this, you're just doing trial and error to see what would work. Now, really what you want to do is start at one and work your way up. So do one, do negative one, two, negative two. The only clue you're going to have as to what it could be is that it will be a factor of this last term. Okay, so if this is seven, it's going to be a one or a seven. Okay, if this is a ten, it'll be one, two, five. So you're looking at factors of this last number. If you start at one, negative one, two, negative two, they're not going to make you go up too high. They're not. They're not that mean. So I'm going to throw in one because I know what the answer is, and I'm not going to waste time doing trial and error. So I think this should come out. So three, pull the three down. So multiply, add, multiply, add. Multiply, oh fantastic. So because that remainder is zero, I now know I've got my x plus three, which I had from before, so I'll just rewrite that one. I'm gonna write my x negative one, which is what I just put in. So if I'm putting positive one in here, bracket is this. And this bit, that now is gonna go down a power. So I've now got three x squared plus four x plus two. Can I factorize this any further? No. If you could, you would factorize it further. But looking at it, numbers that add to four multiplied to six, you know, I'd have to use a quadratic formula. So I'm not going to do that. If it was a nice trinomial that you could solve, you would solve that as well. And that is your classic polynomial question. Okay. Let's have a look. See if I can squeeze in one more. Just pause and set my set this up. Okay, so first thing it's saying. Show that this is a factor. So there's my polynomial set up. So I'm just multiplying and adding. Multiply these together and then adding up and down. That's going to be two. Take away three. Oh, there's a call. Not call, call you. And negative three. Multiply, add, multiply, and add. So that is a factor. So don't forget your statement. You would say, therefore, um, or just say the remainder is equal to zero. Therefore, x take away one is a factor. So we've done the first bit, fantastic. And now it's saying to solve this time, not factorize, but solve. And really it means the same thing. We're saying that our x negative one okay, is what we put into the original term. So this is what's left when we divide by x take away one. So uh, 2x squared, take away 3x, take away two. And if we're asked to solve and that is equal to zero, that's our first point. And this now just becomes a nice little trinomial. So add to this and multiply to negative four because you multiply these two numbers together to give you negative four. So what numbers add to that multiply to negative four? It would be negative four one. Negative four x plus x over two. I would just keep writing this all the way down. I would I? I might just keep a separate section actually. Uh, so all I've done here is I've separated the negative 3 into two terms. And then, we draw a little line, do a common factor, then we repeat the bracket, then we look and say, right, what do I have to put in front of this bracket for this bracket to add up to this? Well, actually, in this case, it's just 1, isn't it? But you would look to see, well, how do I get from x to x or times by 1? So this was 4. You know, 4x take away 8, you'd say, well, I've times in the bracket by 4. But in this case, it's just 1. Video is going to cut out soon. And then we put them together to say that's 2x plus 1, x take away 2. Okay, so that's that section fully factorized. So your final answer would be x take away 1 and 2x plus 1, x take away 2 equals 0. Okay, so we're factorizing it. And this wanted was to solve it, not just factorize it. So once you to solve it, you have to take it from this point all the way to the end. If it just wants you to factorize it, you would stop at this point. Okay. So if the video cuts out, if that's has got through most of it. Um, and yeah, that's the I think the only thing I could probably could have put there would be equals to zero. Sorry, just to make sure I'm correct. Bit of a rush there. So nothing new, you're just doing a bit of factorizing at the end.